Hello, 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 folks. We're just getting set up real quick. Give me just one moment. I'm not gonna lie, folks. Things have been a little chaotic lately. So, first things first. Hello. Hope y'all are having a good day. Okay, with that out of the way. Oh <laughs> boy! My computer has been, uh. It's been a handful. So, the reason I didn't stream this Tuesday was because my, my, my computer was kaputski. And when I say kaputski, I mean. Basically, I could not get my computer to turn on no matter what I did, and I was fairly certain that the reason was because I had fucked something up while installing some new RAM to make my game run better. Come on, Twitch. Show the screen. There we go. So, uh, I was pretty sure I'd done something horrible and completely bricked my computer, because, uh, unfortunately, I am a former uh, Apple user, so when it comes to computer towers, why, why did the music stop? Eh, no. When it comes to things like computer towers, I am still very much learning. Come on. No. So yeah, still getting used to working with a computer that's got towers. Uh, and it could be going better. <laughs> so, uh, I went to the store to get it checked out. He plugged it in, and it worked just fine. All he did was, like, there was this one plug he, inside the computer that I had accidentally knocked out and then put back that he unplugged and replugged, and then it was fine. And I was so pat- so just- ugh. I was so pissed with myself. Like, it- ugh, I- I can't put into words how upset I was. But it was that simple. Uh, I did get some other upgrades though, like switching from a switching off of using a standard hard drive. Not standard, standing. Ugh. Still getting used to computers, like I said. But with that said, I think uh, it's it's worth it. I have noticed my computer does run a lot better, but I only noticed today because I got it back yesterday while they were doing the upgrades. <sighs> they accidentally put the wires back in in a way that it doesn't break the computer, the computer's fine, but it covers some of the USB ports. So I've got to open up the computer casing so I can push those out of the way because it's just in the way for some reason. I'm... <sighs> Come on, you two need to be moved over to the safety zone. Sit. Nope, nope, you're sitting down. Rainy! Rainy! Bird. There you go. Alright, then we need to grab Mind and Apple. Come here, you two. Pop them off over here. Here. Where did they go? Uh, you're fine. Where did mind go? Go? Just completely vanished. Okay, we're gonna run down the hall and run back to see if they teleport to me. There they are. Where did you get off to, you little goober? Come here, come to the safety zone. Sit. Nope. Sit. What? Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to sit now. <clears throat> what? What is wrong with this bird? Okay. There we go. 
So we're going to want to basically, we're going to take out basically the entire first floor and then we're going to replace it with dirt. This is mostly just kind of a temporary thing to put in so that I can, actually, why would I do dirt if I can just go straight into the glass? That might be better. Could I just go straight into the glass? I know I've got a decent amount that's been melting. But... No! Most of it's still sand, though, so... That's gonna be a little bit of an issue. Where did I put it? Let's see. Just take a couple armfuls of that. Grab it. And let's see if we can get some more coal out of here. Home. That is way too much. There we go. Pop that back there, and we should it. So let's get a little bit of this to go. There we go. That's good stuff. Oh, I just remembered that I have my music. Not music. Audio. Now we can have sound effects and whatnot. So, the cobble is definitely going to slow me down a little bit, but it's not a deal. Not the end of the world. Just... It's definitely way more satisfying with the beacon. I'm very glad that I procrastinated this. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear out this first layer and put the glass down and then what we're going to do is we're going to go down section by section. Since this is kind of like built in section, I'm basically going to do the inverse of it as we go down. I feel like that's going to be the easiest way to do this. Forgot to put down the furnaces because I'm a dweeb. A goof. That. That into. What we're gonna do. We're gonna just point those. If we go like this. Struggling this is a little bit tricky, but it's fine. So if we go okay. I accidentally picked up a bunch. <sighs> okay. This one there. Like this. Up this stuff. I need to get down on back to heaven. Honestly, this juggling is going to drive me. Heaven and that comes out to an even 55. Okay. Stuck. We'll put this band down here. Oh, more one short. Yeah. Now we got open pockets. So for building downwards, we're gonna need some various thrift woods. I don't think I brought over here. I got the dark oak at least. I can at least put that into place. Oh, that's dark oak. But I do know that these are dark oak. At least pop those in here. 
here. And that save across real quick. And a torch because it is dark. Uh just temporarily plug that up so I don't fall in there or anything. There. Boom. There. Ah. Then here. Just having those in will make it easier for me around. Then we need to make these. So here and here, of course, on the opposite side. And boom. And now what we're going to do is uh, put this here. I won't be able to reach it here, and I don't want to hook touch or something so silly. Let's go and get the wood box. That's where our spruce is. Meow. Alrighty. Yeah. Got the spruce right here in the wood box. Have you ever had a weird dream? That's a stupid question. Dreams are like by definition really weird. My stories are not stories. My dreams are very story like which doesn't mean they're good don't confuse those two things they are very weird but i'm that kind of kid who like really just binge read everything when they were very little uh the first thing i read but not the first thing on my own but one of my earliest memories was my mother saying hey uh let's read the harry potter books as a family now this was before it was out that J.K. Rowling was a transphobe. In fact, it was back before I even knew what trans people were. I was an itty bitty baby sunshine. Point aside. <laughs> My mom was like, hey, what if I take you and your older brother and every night I read you a chapter from the Harry Potter books? And she stopped and I think it was like the third one because she was like, well, in book three it starts getting scary and uh, when you're old enough to read it by yourself, then you're old enough to deal with the scary parts. And while Little Baby Son was not having that, because I was invested, I was very, very emotionally involved in this story, and I wasn't just gonna wait till I was older. And if the rule was that I could read it when I was old enough to, un to be able to read it alone, then I was gonna read it alone. So I basically sat down with the whole book, and this was, I was very small, it was the summer before first grade. Sat down with the third Harry Potter book all by myself, and I read through the whole thing. My mom didn't even believe me, she like had me take a, like a reading comprehension test, and was very surprised that I was, you know, very intelligent. I'm one of those people who was a gifted child and a less than gifted adult, you know? <laughs> oh, but that aside. Stories and reading and that stuff has like literally been a part of the way my brain thinks since I was an itty bitty baby. So it's not that shocking that my dreams also have a very story-like format. Like, for the longest time I didn't know that people who say like, oh yeah, I had a... I, I didn't know that like dreams about like, for example, going to school and your teeth falling out. I didn't know that was like a thing that was real. I thought it was just like something people talked about in books. I didn't think that was, like, dreams that real people had. I thought, like, oh yeah, that's just, like, the thing people say when they talk about dreaming. Turns out, it's actually fairly common, but, like, I, I don't have dreams like that. It is very rare that I have a dream that is... It makes sense? <laughs> my dreams are very strange. Uh... I'll start with my two tamest ones that I can remember, just to kind of ease you in. Uh, the most tame dream I ever had, I was in my own house, and I had, in, in this dream, uh, there was a 
toy that I actually used to have in real life. And it was a butterscotch pony, which was basically a, like, because I'd begged my parents for a horse for, like, basically since I was old enough to talk, they were like, okay, she's clearly not gonna let go of the horse thing, let's get her a fake horse that's got, like, pre-recorded sounds and you can brush his hair, maybe she'll shut up then. So they did, uh, and I loved that horse so much. I loved it for years, kept it in my bedroom, I'd pet it. Uh, I'd even get down underneath it and like poke at the batteries because I was a weird kid and that kind of thing was really interesting to me. Like, I simultaneously treated this mechanical horse like it was real, but also frequently poked around in its mechanical undercarriage. I didn't like open it up the screws, I just like sat there like fucking at the velcro and staring at the battery compartment. Like I said, weird kid. But uh, in this dream, my horse's head was missing. <laughs> just straight up gone. And I was wandering around looking for it. I wasn't like upset like, oh no, something terrible has happened to my horse. It was one of those dreams where it's like, oh yeah, I must have misplaced the head of my horse. You know. Weird dream logic that makes no sense, that kind of thing. So I go around, I look for the disembodied head of my horse, and on the fireplace downstairs, I find several copies of my horse's head, but each with a different length of neck. The shortest being far too stubby, and the longest being really stupid long, like a, like a llama or something. It was really weird. But in the dream, this was part of a horrible ruse by my mother and my older brother, who had decided to, like, my, I guess my brother needed the mechanical horse head for an experiment at his school? I don't know what the experiment was exactly, but he needed it, and my mom agreed to help him and then cover it up so I wouldn't be mad. But then I found out, obviously. And also, for some reason, like, there were pills, and also, my house was full of, like, a big crowd of strangers. Like, just general dream weirdness. Now, next dream, also fairly tame by typical dream standards. Uh, I was trying to catch a cat. I don't know why. I don't have a cat, never have, even though, boy, would I love a little kitty. Would love to have a little pet kitty, 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 kitty. So yeah, I was looking for this cat, and I was in my grandparents' house, but it wasn't, like, their actual house. It was an imaginary, like, it wasn't the house of my real grandparents. It was a house, and according to the dream, it was my grandparents' house. But it did not look like my real-life grandparents' house, if that makes any sense. Probably doesn't. Dreams seldom do. So... Um, at my grandparents' house, and I'm following this cat, and then their garage is, like, so full, I can't move through it. Like, I have to crawl in sideways, and I get stuck. One of the less interesting dreams, so not as much to say on that, but, like, it was, like, really surreal how full the garage was. Like, almost creepy, and I'm not really claustrophobic, but, like, it, it was so bizarre. I don't know how to describe how weird and cluttered this garage was. Let's start getting into the interesting dreams, though. So, I had this one dream that was, uh, a recurring might not be the right word, because I only had it twice, and it was slightly different the second time, but I'm not sure what other word to use, so recurring, I guess. I had this one dream uh, when I was fairly young, and this was- I was young enough not to know how to drive, for certain. And in the dream, I do drive, but that's a whole other thing. So. In said dream, I go to the movie theater with my brother. And this movie theater is no ordinary movie theater, but an Egyptian pyramid that for some reason, they relocated from Egypt to the landlocked e American state where I live and it's like why would they move an Egyptian pyramid and then refit it into a movie theater in a small town in the middle of nowhere? Who cares? It's a fucking dream. None of it makes sense. Bazoinga. But yeah. Absolutely bizarre. No idea what was going on with that. But like at the beginning of the movie we were there to watch at 
the Egyptian Pyramid movie theater. Uh, it had like a, not an ad, but like an infotainment marshal about how it was, again, a pyramid from Egypt, complete with like a tomb underneath, and also an ancient lost pharaoh's treasure in the catacombs beneath. Ooh, it's spooky. Again, makes no sense, but like, what more would you expect from a dream? Okay, it looks like everything is good. Last layer. I am for now going to. Ah, ah, ah. If I go like. No. Ha! I did it. I placed a block. <laughs> Anyway, so, that night, we go home, and I, like, look at my older brother, and I'm like, okay, we've gotta go to back to the movie theater and break in and find the treasure. Were we gonna steal it? Were we gonna take it back to Egypt? I don't know. That was never established in the dream lore. The dream lore was just, we are going to go and take the mysterious artifact because, and that's, that's all the reason we needed. Again. Great. So, uh, we want to go, but of course we can't tell our parents that we're breaking into this museum slash Egyptian pyramid slash movie theater in the middle of the night. And we can't walk there because it's too far away. So, of course, we have to drive there. And, again, I was very young. Not only was I too young to drive, but my older brother at the time was also too young to drive. In the dream, my brother was like, it's okay, I'll drive. Uh, I've watched our parents enough times. And like, he starts driving like crazy. And I'm like, dude, you're gonna kill us, we're gonna die. This is horrible. And he was, his response was, fine, you do it then. And he just, I guess, wasn't wearing a seatbelt because he like leaped into the back seat. And I had to lunge over from the passenger seat and grab the wheel. And as a little baby sunbeam, I very much wanted to drive. I thought the idea of driving was very cool, very mature and exciting and freedom, maturity, etc. Like, I was very enamored by the idea of driving. And so, of course, in my dream, the moment I touch the wheel, the car steadies out. We're sliding along the road so evenly, moving, like, perfectly at the, like, the correct speed, like, we're not speeding, but it also doesn't feel slow. All sorts of, like, absolute, like, nonsense. Just total fantasy. So, yeah. That's what's going on. We arrive at the movie theater perfectly because in my dream, I'm amazing at driving. Even though I'm not very good at real life. And I'll tell you another story in a bit about my traumatic driving experiences, but uh, that's, that's, that's another story entirely. As for the movie theater pyramid story, I come along, we arrive at the movie theater, and there's like these pair of, I assume twins, it's like a boy and a girl, they look very similar, and they're both dressing like, dressed in like, uh, retro future tinfoil neon shiny jumpsuit type clothes, you know? Like, it looks like what people thought the future would be in the 80s or maybe even 70s. Why were they wearing futuristic jumpsuits? Were they from the future? If they were, my dream didn't endow me with that knowledge. It was just like, yeah, they wear these and never ever clarified why or <laughs> what it was for. Like, no, that they just have uh, impeccable fashion sense, I guess. So yeah, I see this crazy uh, pair of twins, and I see them go into the theater, and I tell my brother, oh shit, those kids are totally going to try and get the secret Egyptian treasure before we do. And obviously, that can't stand because it's more important that we get it, because unlike them, we're going to, I don't know, Use it for good reasons, maybe? Or maybe it's p power, jealous? I don't know. Again, this is just the, the reason why we are stealing this 
is never established in the dream. It's just like, yeah, we need it. They can't have it. I don't know why. But yeah, we go to the movie theater and we delve down into the catacomb mazes beneath the Pyramid Movie Theater. Uh, very typical uh, Indiana Jones, the mummy style things. Uh, there's curses, there's traps, long winding maze corridors made of sandstone and such. Like super typical uh, Hollywood type adventure through uh, Egyptian pyramid. Nothing super original in my brain from that. But we eventually manage to beat the other kids to the end. Uh, the first time I had had this dream, and the second time I had this dream, because like I said, I've had this dream twice when I was very young. Uh, the first and second time, it was basically identical up to this point. Uh, I'll tell you how the second dream differed in a bit, but the first time I had the dream, we made it out to the main catacombs uh, burial tomb, where we found a jewelry box, which was possessed by the ghost of an ancient female pharaoh. And now that I'm older, like, I do know that, like, there were uh, female pharaohs. Like, Hatshepsut is very fascinating to me, for example. Uh, but I, I think it was more Cleopatra-esque beauty lady type pharaoh than actual ruling pharaoh type thing. I don't know. It was a long time ago. The details of this dream are fairly fuzzy. Most of what I remember is because I've recounted it several times to like friends and family and such. As you can tell, I'm great fun at parties. Anyway, so I'm having this weird dream. We get to the jewelry box with the spirit inside and we open it and the spirit is like, thank you, I can now go free. And then, uh, you know, victory music plays, I wake up, end of the dream. Now the second time I have this dream, it diverges at the end. We get to the, the haunted jewelry box at the exact same time as our rival twin. And I pause and go, wait, this has all happened before. And then the pharaoh spirit ghost lady emerges from her jewelry box. And she says something like, oh yes, it is a eternal cycle. And then there's like this dramatic Hollywood clip show of like us being reincarnated thousands of times breaking into the same pyramid, racing each other to get to the end and free her. But then, like, I think we free her for real, maybe? Again, not very clear, very dream heavy, not clear what's going on at all. But the end, we live happily ever after, I guess. Credits roll, I wake up. Again, very unclear on what exactly was taking place. But it was exciting. But yeah, I've had like two or three dreams where like I'll have a dream and then I'll have it a second time at a later date. And right as I'm getting to the end, my brain goes like, oh wait, shit, we've done this one before. And just like tacks on a really half-assed, but actually it was a sequel. Even if it doesn't make sense for a sequel to be the exact same thing as the first time. I don't understand it. <laughs> Dreams are weird, man. For a while, I was actually very into dream interpretation. Uh, it's hard to say if I ever actually believed in it. I think I I've never been like super like spiritually minded. I, I think at most I used to think that maybe like the symbols did have something to do with like the psychological subconsciousness or whatever. I was a fucking pretentious child. Still pretty pretentious now, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, so, like, I, there were times when I did think maybe there was something to it in a more uh, scientific sense than just, like, oh yeah, dream prediction, because, you know, that, that does seem kind of far out there. I'm open to being proven wrong about things, but, like, personally, not very uh, into that kind of thing, belief-wise. I, I'm just talking circles at this point. But I was really into dream interpretation. I had this big old book of how to interpret dreams and the meanings of different dream symbols. I still 
how to help up. I don't know if I still have that, but hold on, I'm gonna go check out my uh, little bookcase. It's like just across the room from my desk. Be right back. still have it. I didn't see it at first. It's called Dream Sight by Dr. Michael Lennox. Is Michael Lennox a real doctor? I don't fucking know, man. I've had this book for years. Uh, here, let's open to a random page and discuss a t topic in dreams. Oh, clowns! Now, Clowns typically represent subversiveness and an untrustworthy expression of playful energy. Then, because this is a very scientific, very real book, uh, it sounds like, okay, what was the context? Which I do think makes it more reasonable. Like, again, I'm not sure if I totally believe in this kind of stuff. It seems pretty pseudoscience, but this does make it a little bit more feasible to me. So, in context, was there a clown in your dream? Were you the clown? Was there more than one clown? What was the setting? Was the clown happy or sad? Was the clown performing? Was the image of the clown delightful or creepy? Uh, and then it goes through like this, like, oh, personal focus. Here's what it might mean for you. You know, stuff like, uh, are you clowning around in life? Are you frightened by your childlike nature? Again, a lot of it is fairly vague, so you can interpret it in a way that is going to apply to you. I don't know how much I believe about like these actually being symbols of like real interpretable things. I could be wrong, but I don't know. It it's it's interesting. <laughs> I, I find myself feeling that way about a lot of things. Like, regardless of whether I believe something or not, there's a lot of things that I take interest in. I don't believe in things like crystal healing or herbal... Well, herbal remedies, some of them do actually have scientific backing. They're just not really a substitute for, like, uh, you know, pharmaceutical medicine. But like, things more like spiritual healing, using things like crystals and frequency. I don't believe in that at all. Unlike things like uh, symbolism in dreams, I don't really have a lot of, uh, I don't have a lot of room to think, well maybe, I don't have a lot of, like, uh, benefit of the doubt for that kind of thing. But I still find it interesting. I, I like hearing like, what do people think will heal them and why? It's, it's just really interesting to me. And I don't believe in astrology, for example, but like, I love reading my horoscope because it's like, oh yeah, I can totally see that as fitting me. Why does that apply and how? Is it because it's vague? Is it because it's a generational type thing? Is it open to interpretation? Am I uh, falling prey to biases that are like causing me to only focus on the things that fit? and glaze over things that don't. Like, honestly, so long as people aren't hurting anybody, like with astrology, I don't mind. Now, if you're starting to like recommend alternative medicine over like pharmaceuticals and proven scientific medicine, I start having a problem with you there. But like, so long as it's not causing people issues and putting people in danger, I find that kind of stuff really fascinating. Big old drink. Alright, so I think the best way to do this figure out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so it's eleven, then that's the twelfth block. So we want eleven underneath this to be uh, kind of flush with there. Let's see. 
Uh, there's probably a better way to do this. Come around this side. This duty. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. How far up can I reach? I can't break through the ceiling. That's probably fine, but it is a little bit disappointing. Alright, so we're gonna need to dig down from about here, because where our uh, temporary wall is. We are gonna st extend it out, but we do need a temporary safe zone for all of our pets that are up there. Down this level. And again, this is a temporary flooring just while we build out our first height of base. It is going to be a little bit tricky to find our, uh, whatchamacallit, our scaffolding tower from down below, but pretty sure we can figure it out. Oof. Oof, this is spooky. Too spooky for me. Blah. Oh, I really hope there's a skeleton down that way. Oh, that's true. Alright, keep slowly moving along. How far down is- I think that should be the floor- oh wait, are we overshooting? I think that's like floor level of power. This may not be the best way to do things. <laughs> hmm! Look, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, that could be said about everything I do ever. Oh, wait. No? Uh, if I come over here and make. Uh, I'll just go out a random distance, and if it doesn't connect to anything, that's fine. We are going to want to go down by one. Oh, we still have our silk touch in place. Which should be proper one back in. I guess it doesn't really matter which one we're using right now. But, I don't know. Having fortune on right now, fortune first, it just feels right. It feels more correct of two correct answers. Alright, let's go put these away. I am in need of more torches from but probably not enough so to completely change track. I can probably uh wait, where is the like this, 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 all into torches. In there. Alright, then we're gonna go back down through here. I'm gonna go like this. Should hopefully dig our way into that other tunnel we made out from the scaffold. Probably from here. -ish. Oh, here it is! We did go and overshoot. I kinda expected this much, but that's not a big deal. We're just gonna pop on up here. Oh, we overshot by a decent amount. Woo! So, the wall is gonna be here, so we can put one deep, but put that there for now. Uh, and that's how far to this side we need to go. Woo! That there still, so I can see. Now, I don't remember quite how deep I need to go. That might be a slight issue. Huh. Oh, eh, there we 
we go. A little bit more lightning. I think the depth stops about here, but I could be wrong. Kinda hard to tell. We'll just kind of cut it here for now, I think. Just... Oh, actually, we can just kind of go like this. Go over to the... There go scaffolding pole. Hello there. And if we go all the way down... Then out. How far did I need to go? Wait, no, this is the area I dug for the base. Oh, I left this all the way down here. Did the music stop? God damn it. <sighs> Can't believe YouTube hates sick vibes. Alright. Where did I do the digging to figure out my diameters? No one did it somewhere around here. Ow. I don't see it, so we're gonna go up to the surface and try it a different way. So, y'all seen that like AI art stuff? What am I saying? Everybody's seen it. Like, there's like a million pictures of people making like a a monkey riding a horse into the Revolutionary War or whatever. If you have somehow missed it and the thousands of memes people have used it to make, uh, there are various AIs that are starting to become fairly big. Step forward, step back, so negative 105. So these various different AIs and such uh, are capable of basically rendering uh, pictures that don't actually exist. They use composites of like a thousand different pictures and mix that with some AI and figure out like how to get what you're going for. 105 or 105? right here. Okay. I have mixed feelings about me. Because, like, it's really cool to be able to see, like, the completely computer-generated image. But, like, as they get better and better, there are going to be companies that choose to pay artists less and just use AI more. Because, like, AI is a lot faster. Uh, depending on what it gets priced at, it could be deeper. And although right now artists can create more specificity and often better quality, like, companies love to cut corners. Like, the more viable this gets, the more corporations are going to just stop hiring artists. And like, that's people's jobs. When people talked about like, oh no, the computers are coming for their job, for our jobs, ah! You know, like, normally it's like McDonald's workers, not artists. Like, that's not to say McDonald's workers shouldn't get paid. I'm just emphasizing like, <laughs> it's a little bit scary how much the internet has accomplished. And just technology in general, really. Like, moving very fast. There's a bigger issue though, and that is the fact that a lot of these AIs, and by a lot I mean all of them, the images they're sampling from are not... They aren't images they have the right to use for anything. Like, they don't have the copyright to those images, they just basically have their AI go scrape, like, Google for basically references to use in their AI generation. And even if like the effect isn't obvious, they're still using the work of artists who are not getting paid 
the replace artist, which like even if you don't think is worth like not using the, the technology over, it's still very scummy. Like it's just it's just scummy no matter what. One, two, three, five, seven, eight. Like, imagine if I go to work at like, I don't know, a Wendy's and I'm like, hey, uh I did the day of work, money please! And they were just like, mm, you did the work, but this DJ recorded you working and remixed audio. So we're gonna give them your paycheck. And it's like, no? What? Why would you give them my paycheck? I'm getting paid for... And then it's like, if I go home, cause like I quit my job at Wendy's, because they paid a DJ to remix my workday, like what the fuck? And then a DJ remixes me just trying to play video games and it's like, no, don't monetize my hobby too. I don't consent to this. Like, doesn't matter if I'm doing it professionally, doesn't matter if I'm doing it as a hobby, there's no escape. I'm trapped in the cycle of capitalism. Nowhere to run. And then it's like, it's not fair. They shouldn't be able to utilize other people's hard work to both put those people out of a job and make money themselves. Like that's that's just really shitty. But on the other hand, like I'm torn because like first of all, I hate companies that like use and then dump people for their utility. Like well, I could hire a real human being who needs this money to survive, or I could go beep boop computer and get an inferior product, but I don't care about inferiority. Like, that sucks. As an artist and as a human rights, uh, passionate person, I don't know, man. I, half the words that come out of my mouth are nonsense. I hate, right? It, it's just like, I want to support cool technology, but I also want to support people not going broke and keeping their job. Especially because like, you would be surprised how thankless the job of being an artist is. People act like it's easy, like artists are, oh, they're so lazy, like, why can't you go get a real job? That is hard. It's so fucking hard. Like, dude, that person who is asking for, like, okay, now we're getting onto a topic that really gets my goat. That chupacabra. Now, anyway, <sighs> there is nothing more infuriating than people who say, your commission prices are too high! And this isn't talking about me, because I haven't I haven't really done commissions properly, but like I've seen it happening to other artists. And although I myself am only a hobbyist, currently anyway, like being the absolute shit, like more professional artists are put through, like full-time career artists, it makes my blood boil. Like they will charge in a way that gives them less than minimum wage and people will get mad at them for not giving it for free. Art is a luxury item. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. It's really that simple. And I know that sucks and I don't like that, it, that there are people who can't afford things. That, that's a bummer. But like, Artists deserve to be able to afford rent and food and although it seems to you like, oh, that's so much money, why are they charging so much? That's stupid. They are charging you for their training. They are charging you for the time they spend on it. And if it is physical art as opposed to digital, they also have to charge you for the supplies they use. And like, then they just need to have a profit because that's literally what a job is. And then there are people who are like, oh, you shouldn't do it for a profit. You should do it for fun. 
if they were doing it for fun, it would be a hobby. And if they were doing it for fun, they wouldn't draw what you want them to draw. They would draw what they want to draw. Like, I don't understand how some people just don't realize it's not fun for me or most artists really to draw somebody else's thing. Like, it's fun to draw something you're passionate about. You can find some fun in like drawing commissions, but like, Drawing something that a different person cares about will never be as fun as drawing something you yourself care about. But like, there are just these people who are like, Why are you charging so much? You should be drawing for fun! And by for fun, I mean, give me free art! Like, the amount of entitlement that people who buy art or rather people who don't want to buy art and just complain about it until they find somebody just anxious enough to just give in. It's, it's heartbreaking. Art's hard, man. <laughs> Advice for all my artists out there. If anybody ever asks you for free art, let them know there is this wonderful way that they can get free art and it's called grabbing a piece of paper, a pencil, and making it themselves. And if they say, oh, well, I can't draw, well, neither could you before you did your months, years, however long it spent for you to learn how to draw. So either they can have art that is shitty and free or they can have art that is good and costs money. It's literally just basic common sense, and I don't understand how, like, I'd like to think that most of the people complaining are children, but I've seen enough that I know that it's not the case, unfortunately. <sighs> people can just be a little bit, a little bit of a headache to handle. Alright, let's move this back to the wall. I really need to get this shovel repaired before it explodes on me. You know what would be really funny? A Minecraft mod where when a tool breaks, it does like literally explode. Like just charged creeper explosion if you don't keep your tools suspended. <laughs> Punishes you for executive dysfunction. Oh, that would that would not be very good for me because I am not a functioning human being. It's so hard to shower, man. It shouldn't be. It's just stepping into a tube where water falls on you and then rubbing yourself with soap. But like doing that part where you get all the clothes off and step in. Oh, that's so hard. I don't want to do it. You, you can't make me. You're not my mom. And it's like, no, you're an adult, you need to do this. But then your brain is just like, I could. Or, I could lay face down on my bed, thinking about dumb shit. And then I always end up laying face down on my bed, thinking about dumb shit. Honestly, <laughs> I, I don't, ugh. There's actually this one, one weird tip that doctors won't tell you. But like, legitimately, it's a strategy that at least works for me. But again, like, this is supremely dumb. If it doesn't work for you, that's fair, because I don't understand why it works for me. And every time I do it, I think there's no way this is gonna work. I don't feel motivated enough. This is not gonna work. I'm not gonna do the thing just because I do the trick. The trick always works. I count down, either from 10 or from 5. And if I, I, I need to be doing the thing that I'm procrastinating before I get to zero. Now, this only works with smaller things, like getting out of bed, or like picking up a shirt that I've left on the floor for way too long. And you can use it to like string together multiple things. Like if you need to like do all your laundry, you can do it like one thing at a time. But like 
I, I just count and I think like, okay, this is stupid. I'm gonna get to the end and not do it. But then I do! Like my body just autopilots. It's stupid and it's weird and I do not understand it, but it keeps working somehow. And then like on the rare occasion where it doesn't work, I'll just start counting over. And usually the second time, I will do it. <laughs> I don't understand why. Maybe it's like, what's it called? Uh, you know, the thing with the bell, the psychological condition, Pavlovian response. Maybe it's a Pavlovian response from childhood when my mom would like count down from 10 and be like, if you don't have, if you don't start cleaning your room when I get to zero, you're in big trouble. Like maybe it's like, a psychological thing or maybe it's just like oh number go down start I don't know it's weird Oof. I had a very interesting dinner tonight uh, it is old I think it was autumn harvest salad which is a very fancy name and it's not salad as in, like, salad salad. It's more salad like tuna salad. As in, it's not salad. Why did they name it that? That's so dumb. And what it was- Also, you put it on bread. So that's another thing in common with tuna salad. So what it was, was it's like a bunch of chopped kale. I hate kale, but this tasted pretty good. Bunch of chopped kale. Uh, a little, like, a, a little dribble of apple cider vinegar. A bunch of just diced up real small apples. Uh, some shredded chicken breast. Again, diced up pretty small. You want everything cut up small so it can be, like, made into a liquidy paste. You don't want big chunks of any. That, that ruins it. But yeah, you chunk everything up really small, including the kale. It's got, it can't be big leaves. It's got to be like little teeny pieces of kale. And then uh, it's also got crushed cashews. What else was there? I have salt and pepper, just a teeny dash of, they said stevia, but like, who owns stevia? I just used a tiny bit of sugar. Uh, and then there was olive oil mayonnaise and Greek yogurt, plain. I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was everything. And it was all mixed together into this, like, kale paste, which tasted a lot better than kale ever should. Like, I was very thrown off by how surprisingly pleasant it was. Like, it was kind of perturbing. Kale should not be pleasant. That is not what kale is for. Kale is for being disgusting. But yeah, if you make that, then you put it on some toast. Basically just warm and crisped up bread. And that's it! You just eat it! And it's delicious! I thought maybe about adding some cheese, but it didn't eat it. I've never had a food that didn't eat some cheese. And I was like, God damn! I can, I can snack on this! I've done a decent amount of cave exploration and I haven't seen any mobs yet. It's making me nervous. Like, are they just like slowly all just gathering in one place to just absolutely bone me? Not like it. Throw that there. Oh, go back the way we came. Yeah, trying to eat healthier, it's a pain, man. Like, I love eating. I love big, fluffy, creamy, what are they called? Fucking, uh, eclairs. I love a nice, soft salad. Sal no, not salad. Why are my words so bad today? I love a pasta. Creamy, chewy. Preferably with just an ungodly amount of cheese. Just so much cheese. Like, would not believe how much cheese. I love cheese. Oh, the gnocchi soup at Olive Garden? Mmm, that shit's good. 
And then my mom's been making pumpkin bars lately, and it's like, ma'am, you can't make homemade pastries. I'm trying to get healthy. And then she made a second tray because my brothers ate the full first tray without properly sharing with everybody else. <sighs> I'm working on it though. I'm getting better with self control. It's a journey. But like, I've been slowly but surely learning to enjoy foods that I normally don't enjoy. Uh, I have, uh, I have a. Uh, yeah. Totally freaked my out, myself out there for a second. I thought there was like a, like a monster or something, but it was just the particle effect from the beat. Oh, I'm going crazy today. I'm on my crazy pills. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, I've been trying to experiment with more foods that I normally don't enjoy to try and expand my healthy eating options because uh i am autistic or rather i'm on the autism spe spectrum they used to divide it up into different sub diagnoses before they were just like nah we're just gonna call it all autism like we don't need to define like all the different little pieces which is somewhat inconvenient because i've got a weird kind of autism where it's like Instead of being bad at words, I'm really good at words. Still bad at the other stuff, though. Like, you know that stereotype of the autistic savant who's, like, a genius at math? Ignoring how stereotypes are harmful for just, like, a minute here. Imagine that, but with writing, and that was me as a baby. I'm better... No, I'm not better. I'm, I'm not as good at writing <laughs> now. Because I've, uh, not been nurturing my talent, so to say. But I'm still relatively well-spoken, uh, fairly eloquent, so to speak. At least in written form. I'm still a total, uh, tongue-tied blabbermouth when it comes to, like, speaking. But, like, that's not something I struggle with, even though for, like, most people with autism, like, it is an issue. I'm bad at math, though. I'm so bad. But, like, socializing? Like, it's so weird. Like, there are all of these made-up rules. Like, nobody told me that it is not appropriate to teach your friends how to grapple from your karate classes. And as a small child, I was like, everybody's going to want this knowledge. Everybody needs to know how to grapple, especially because it is fun. That's not something you're supposed to teach your friends, especially when it's making other friends uncomfortable. This isn't a recent lesson I learned, by the way. I learned this when I was a child, but nobody told me, and it turns out you're supposed to just know. Like, it's, it's crazy how many social rules we have that, like, neurotypical people just pick up on but if you're not neurotypical you gotta like do this 5d chess to figure it out it's ugh. i i had this like really weird experience with public school because like on one hand Teachers love me, except for uh, kindergarten, but my mom says that teacher was a bitch, so that doesn't count. <laughs> but uh, anyway, most teachers really liked me because I was very intelligent, I loved answering questions, uh, and I always got like really high scores on all my writing tests. Like, I, I was kind of a teacher's pet. In fact, I was a, a bit too much of a teacher's pet, like they would get annoyed at me like, Go outside, do kin- uh, It's time for recess, you need to do your recess. And I'd just be like, I wanna stay in here and read. And they'd be like, no, you're you're supposed to go out for recess. And I would just sulk because I didn't wanna go outside and play with other children. You know, like recess, like children do. Again, very uh, 
bad at connecting to my peers. I had very... I, I had like one friend per year. I had one year where I made three friends in a year and I was very lucky. To be honest, I don't mind having less friends though, because the friends I do have are way cooler than most people. Like, a lot of people are really boring. It only really... Like, I had more friends when I was younger because my parents would set up playdates. Which, like, very sweet of them. But as I got older and I had to get friends on my own, I only really tried to make friends with people who seemed interesting. Which wasn't many people. <laughs> Yes, I was a judgy kid. <laughs> but like, if you're gonna choose who you spend time with, wouldn't you want to choose the fun ones? That's, that's just life. <sighs> I had a really weird experience in grade school though, like... I might have been bullied? But I don't know. I know that there was a kid who, on the bus to school, I'm fairly sure was mean to me. But, like, time has fogged my memory and caused me to very much doubt myself. So it's- I do think he was being mean, but there's also a slim, non-zero chance that he was just kind of being goofy. And my little autistic brain just interpreted that as, like, just being an absolute dick. Which, like, that's more of- if, if, if it's, like, the latter where it's, like- Less him being a dick and more just my poor autistic brain not doing well with it, then it might have more have been an issue of like poor management of like teaching, poor skills of how to interact with neurodivergent and neurotypical classmates. I don't, like, you know, inter understanding. It may have been an issue of that. I think he was bullying me, but again, between the decade now that has passed and also like just struggling to interpret people in general, I could be wrong. <laughs> but yeah, it got bad enough on my emotions that I convinced my mom to drive me to schools because like I was just like, it got bad enough. And this is in part because I have an anxiety disorder, but I would literally, like, feel so sick before school that I would just cry and cry and cry and say, I can't go, I'm sick! And, like, one day I even, like, physically threw up. Not because I was sick, but just because I was anxious. But I couldn't tell the difference because I was a little baby. <laughs> little baby sunshine! School wasn't all bad, but, like... Just recounting the times my brain did not click with this way school worked are some of the more interesting stories. Oh, there was one thing I really loved, though. Uh, our teacher, uh, for several grades, actually, I think it was like a school-wide thing, would, after lunch, for like, I don't know if it was an hour or 30 minutes, would just read to us from a book. And I think we had, like, assignments about it where we, like, had to, like, write, like, oh, this is what the book is about, blah, 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 stupid stuff. But, like, while they read, we would either be given a craft to do that was related to, uh, social studies, or, uh, we would just be allowed to just kind of sit there and listen. And that was one of my best times to fidget. Because, again, I was in school in a time when, uh, Neurodivergency was less widely handled in the school system. To my understanding today, it's still not great, but like there's at least an awareness of things like some to kids use fidget toys, some kids need a different seat that they like kind of bounce on to help them focus, and like a balance of like what's distracting to the other kids and what's helpful to this kid, like figuring out how to balance it. That wasn't a thing when I was in school. So, my main set for source of fidgeting, when I was in school at least, was actually doodling. I would just draw little pictures on the school note paper. Uh, I actually got trouble for it because the teachers thought I wasn't paying attention. And I could answer any questions they asked me if they did, because I was. 
And I, even though I didn't know at the time that I was uh, neurodivergent, I did know for whatever reason, like drawing helps me focus. And I would try to communicate this, but like, you know, it's hard. Being neurodivergent as a kid in like a, a, a very neurotypical school, it's, it's difficult stuff. Like, ugh, I just remembered this one time. I got into a fight with another kid. I don't remember what it was over. It was something stupid. We were both yelling at each other uh, and we had to go to the principal's office. It wasn't physical. We were just yelling and crying and screaming because, you know, grade schoolers are kind of baby. So we go to the principal's office and she's like, okay, uh, I want to handle this calmly. So while each of you calm down, please write down on this piece of paper your side of the story. So. I wrote, I got mad a bit, but the, the, the principal misunderstood it and thought I said, I got mad and bit. She thought I was confessing to biting the other kid, which ironically, I have in my past once bit another kid in school. But like, that was a much less dramatic moment because it was in kindergarten and after I bit him, he immediately like, like, 20 seconds later, he stopped crying and was like, it's okay, I'm not mad anymore. Look, you can see through my hand. You couldn't, but like, we were children, so we thought we could. Gosh, kindergartners are like the funniest people alive, dude. Ugh, kids are just great. I could never have kids of my own, but like, they're just fun to hang out with. They're funny, they're smart, like a lot smarter than adults give them credit for. They're stupid in some ways, don't get me wrong. Like. Like, they are not intelligent enough to know a lot of things. For example, when I was very young, I thought, you know what, driving shouldn't be limited on your age. It should be limited on capability. They should let me test to drive. And maybe? But then I also thought the same thing about voting. Like, oh no, voting shouldn't be based on age. It should be based on intelligence. Now that I'm older, I'm aware that like most teens and children are not intelligent enough. And also if something like that was actually implemented, it would probably be very poorly designed and prohibit a lot of fully capable people purely on like the grounds of just like somebody not agreeing with them and like, oh, if you are, Ooh. hello? My mom busted in. <clears throat> but yeah. Now that I'm older, I recognize that that is a impractical choice that should not be put in- uh, impractical option, and it should not be put in the hands of the government. <laughs> because, uh, I don't know if I'd say that, like, they're partisan enough, but or is it- Partisan two parties or party list. I don't know if they are unbiased enough to make rules that wouldn't like uh, be just voter suppression for minorities. It's like even if it doesn't seem like a questionnaire-based test could like uh, accident like purposefully or accidentally identify that kind of thing. Unfortunately, it can. <laughs> It's like, kind of like the IQ test. Although I am actually quite pleased with my IQ score, 129. <laughs> I'm also well aware of the fact that IQ score is a kind of useless measurement of like intelligence because it only applies to a very specific kind of intelligence. So I, I just like having big number. I like big number in the test that people go wow at. <laughs> I just think it's neat. Like I know that it's not that big of a deal and I know that uh, the IQ test is not important nor super uh, useful in intelligence measuring. But I do, I, I, I do like knowing like, oh, I, 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 I did good. It's, it's like getting a sticker that says you did a good job. Uh, it's like, I don't know what I did a good job in, but I don't care. Hell yeah. Very satisfying. Like a pat on the back. Anyway, 
I'm just kind of rambling nonsense now. Yeah. For similar reasons as, like, a voting age wouldn't work, it's kind of like the same issues that would come with, like, having to apply for parenthood, like a marriage license. Like, maybe it would prevent, like, child abuse from happening, but also, like, there are probably going to be horrible parents who slip through and kind parents who unfairly get stopped from having kids. Which is already happening in some form with gay and trans couples being limited their ability to adopt. Like, honestly, it, it, it's insane to me how many people are like, No! I don't want more families willing to adopt! Especially, like, considering a lot of those same people are, like, anti-abortion, it's like, you want more babies, but less people to adopt them? Like, please, think critically. You, you, there, there's not- there's too many babies and not enough homes! Wild. You know what really gets in my craw? Re regardless of where you stand on the abortion issue, people who have like posters that saying, we will adopt your baby as like an anti-abortion statement, I can guarantee you maybe 0.01% of them would actually do so. Like, if you ever see some protesters with a sign that says, we will adopt your baby, don't abort, Go up and ask them how many children they already have that are adopted. Because if they're willing to do it now, surely they've done it before. Surely they wouldn't only do it as a political statement. Surely if they're willing to adopt, they wouldn't only just do it now. <sighs> and then there's a lot of those people who- I, I saw an interview where they talked to this one woman saying that, and she was like, well, if I adopted them, they wouldn't be my real children. I only want real children. Like, that's so shitty! I don't care, like, what side of the issue you are on. If you think that is, like... A, like, I, I just hate hypocrites. I get so mad about people who don't even stand by their own things they say. I'm very passionate about a lot of things. I have strong feelings about various social justice issues. But, like, few things get me quite as heated as hypocrisy. Like, oh, Makes me so mad. Hair rip, bite, kill. Did I patch this over? Oh, I already did. Okay. We have more class than I need. That's a pleasant surprise. So it'll be useful because I do want to extend this back one module. I'm still procrastinating on deciding what I'm gonna have back here. Maybe like a cool statue, or like a bunch of miniature cuckoo clocks. That could be kind of fun. Alright. Come down to here. Oops, step on to this step. Alright, and then we just kind of do... Clearing up rodeo down on this level, and it should let us build the first upside down module. My arms are too short. Here is space here we can. Oh, my pickaxe is low. Time to switch to our silk. Come along here. We do need to kick a lot of this back one so that it's sunk into the wall so I can place the wall. Why did my music stop? Unacceptable. 
I need to look up how to like stop YouTube from idling out on music. It is just so annoying. I want to be able to enjoy my tunes. Maybe it's homophobia. I just realized I haven't talked about Twitter. <laughs> oh, how are all my Twitter arenas doing out there? Websites on fire. Okay, sorry, I had to check something. Back. So, what was I saying? Yeah, Twitter. <laughs> oh, look. If you enjoyed Twitter, I'm very sorry for your loss. However, as somebody who does not like Elon Musk, who hates him, and honestly is disgusted that he is the main face of the autistic community. Oh, vengeance has never been so sweet. I say vengeance as if this is my fault. Twas I who burned the Twitter down! <laughs> anyway, uh, just watching it, watching it crash and burn has been very, very satisfying. Personally, Never liked Twitter. You did? Again, sorry for your loss. I've tried several times to get into it just because, like, it's one of those things where it's so big, you kind of have to at least try to get into it. Especially, like, for branding purposes, slash PM, etc. But, like, oh, I don't like using it. It feels weird. Everybody on there is, like, really negative and mean. <laughs> I say that as if I'm not a Tumblrite. Why is everybody on Bird App so mean? I much prefer homegrown meanness in the fields of Tumblr. Honestly, like, I don't get the appeal of Twitter. It's, like, limited amount of characters, okay? That's why everybody hates each other and everybody is like really mean and I have trouble finding content because of the weird algorithm. I don't like it. It's not for me. And watching something I don't care about just absolutely ruin an idiot billionaire. Oh, chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Do they really? Anyway. <laughs> The chaos with like the verified accounts and the blue check marks. It's so fucking funny, man. Like, look at all those people just self immolating. And then, like, because Twitter, like, will specify, like, this account is verified because they're an important person versus this account is verified because they bought Twitter Blue. Like, wow. Thanks for letting us know who to point and laugh at. Like, they literally just, like, they painted a target on anybody who actually pays for that garbage. Oh, it's so funny. How am I- Oh, I don't have unbreaking on this one! I forgot about that! Oh, that's frustrating. We're gonna have to go back to ye old spider grinder. Audio. Yes, it's quieter than my music. I need to get, like, a better source of XP, because just running over to this real dog shit iron farm, it's not doing it anymore. Like, I'm really not doing super hot when it comes to trading. Y'all, this is, like, so inefficient. <laughs> oh man, we're running out of space. But we're gonna grab that. Crafting table. Crafting bench? Crafting bench? No bench? 
L plus no bench plus maidenless. I don't- oh, I do have one in my- <laughs> I don't have one in my inventory, I say, staring directly at two. Alrighty. We can take this over, this over, this over. Do I have any more speed? Uh, nope. That's all I can carry right now. <laughs> Inventory management might be load. Height. I think that's everything I can afford to dump right now. Alrighty, down to the old spider mines. Sploosh! Alrighty, while we're waiting for these guys to spawn, I am gonna take a quick break, grab some safety measures. Alright, let me tab out to put up the pause for just a second. Alrighty, I'll be back with you guys soon.
doing some pretty good hissing. I'm hoping that means we've got a decent amount of spiders. Because our pick is busted as hell. Ugh, and I'm all out of drink, so hope that doesn't run out anytime soon. Put this in our off hand since it's the unbreaking one. And down here, we'll get all those spider butts. You know, it was like, I knew that spiders could sometimes have potion effects on them in hardcore, but I didn't realize until later that like, it isn't like, oh, that spider just happens to have been hit by a witch throwing a splash potion. For some reason, one of the few changes in hardcore, besides just being hard difficulty, is that like, spiders have a small chance to spawn in with a potion effect. Which most of the time isn't a huge deal, except for the rare and terrifying INVISIBLE SPIDERS! You can still see them because even when the spider's invisible, its eyes are still visible. But BOY! Those guys are horrifying to run into in a cave. Ugh, especially early game. You can still take them, they're just as strong as any other spider, but like, ugh, it makes me jump. Okay, we've got some pretty good repairs to the pick. Let's try and get more of them though. Oh, I was trying to shoot the guys who were stuck. You coming up? Like, see how this guy right there has like little pale blue uh, swirly bits from like a potion? My guess is it's a speed effect, but it's kind of hard to tell. This guy's got red. They just have like all various different abilities. Not all of them spawn with effects, and the cave spiders, I don't believe, spawn with anything ever. Which, like, they don't need to be invisible or super fast. They already poison you, so like, that's that's fine. They don't need to be stronger. <sighs> but like, the thing about Minecraft Hardcore that I've learned is like, it's intimidating. Especially if you play Minecraft how I do normally, aka throwing yourself into danger constantly with little regard for hate, for safety or health, and are just generally kind of clumsy. That, that is how I tend to live my life. We can get a couple onto our shovel and our silk tip touch so they're just not like on the verge of exploding. You don't need to like fully repair these, I just want them to be like in the orange or yellow instead of the red. Just so I have to... But like, hardcore Minecraft, it's basically very similar to just normal Minecraft. Like, when I was younger I thought like, oh, hardcore is just gonna be like insane. Nobody can do hardcore. But like, now that I'm older and I've both watched other content creators as well as like kind of learned more about Minecraft, the only difference is, is it's hard mode, which can sound intimidating but is not quite as bad as a lot of players that are like casual teams to think it is. Uh, and is in some ways better than easy mode. Like for example, instead of getting killed, the villagers always get zombified, so that makes it easier to get their discounted prices. But like, it, it's just permanently hard mode and you can't change that, which, no big deal. It's not as bad as it, it's bad, but like once you get the hang of it, it's not, you know? Like, it's just a matter of getting a custom. Uh, and then the other changes are, you can't die, which does take getting used to, but once you learn to adapt your playstyle, it's hard, but it's not as bad as I expected after the first couple of deaths. <laughs> I, if you've been here for a while, you know that I have absolutely died a few times. But like, I lost those worlds, I moved on. After you get fairly situated, then like it becomes pretty, pretty manageable. Knock on wood and whatnot, don't, don't fuck me. But like, not as bad as it could be. 
like, and then the only other real difference is, again, the spiders sometimes have potion effects. They've done very little to actually differentiate, like, hardcore mode from anything else. Like, it's, it's very similar to just hard mode expand. Dump our spare items real quick. Let me see, what do we got up to today? Uh, brain has briefly stopped running. Alright, since we've got this repaired, we can go and get back to work on it and digging out that flower! Let's get to the bed. Nope. Nope. There we go. Alright, we're gonna slide on down here. Pop out here. Come back. We're saving out some space. These are correctly. They are. Very carefully. Knock those bits out. Oof, my eyes are a little bit strained. I've been gaming too much today. Jokes aside, I've probably been looking at my screen for too long. Eh, I can go a little while longer though. Oops. Accidentally closed the bitch. How am I supposed to see my bitch screen when my tooth is closed? Unacceptable. Alright. Probably the biggest base I've ever committed to, besides maybe my ocean base that I did on a server with friends. Uh, that one, uh, it hasn't been quite finished and I don't know if it ever will be because, first of all, I don't play on that server as much as I used to, second of all, it didn't really have a clear goal in mind like this one. Uh, the center of hub of the base was a drained ocean monument, and then I built a large, like, bubble uh, that had the opening was open to the sky, but it just kind of was a glass bubble surrounding this drained ocean monument. It was a very, very shitty, poorly made guardian farm in the middle. <laughs> but, like, I just lived in the ocean monument, and I was, like, decorating it and making it look, like, more interesting to me anyway. Uh, I don't think it's one of my better looking bases, but it's definitely one of the biggest ones I've done. I did enjoy working on it. Very rhythmic to drain out all of the ocean, even if it was very, uh, very slow. Okay, we've got a bit to go on this layer. That's okay. We can just keep on moving. The oldest Minecraft world I have in memory. I can remember two. I don't remember which one came first. Uh, the first of the two... Well, again, I just said that I don't remember which one came first. But the first I'm going to talk about... Uh, I don't remember, like, names or anything. But, like, I was very heavily inspired by Stamby's Lovely World. Because, again, this was very early when I was, like very new to Minecraft. I, like, I used to be very into Stampy. Like, this, like, I've been watching Minecraft content for... In like a decade? God, that makes me feel old. No, not a decade. Maybe a decade? Jeez! I feel like I'm withering away. Anyway, so... Stampy was one of the YouTubers I first got really into. Not even just for like Minecraft, just in general. Uh, Stampy Long Nose. So, uh, my very first survival world was very much inspired by him. I wanted to have a big house with a shopping district and 
I wanted there to be uh, a mini game district, even though it was only me and nobody to play mini games with. I wanted to have this huge big thing. Uh, I vaguely remember I built a dirt house to survive the first night. Then I built my new wooden house around the dirt house. Like I, like I literally made an exoskeleton for the dirt house. And then I made a giant tower with a glass floor, but instead of being like a mirrored floor, it just was straight onto water. I, I, I thought it was cool at the time. I never finished the tower, like so it was just like a single floor open to the sky. Uh, and then I dug down a really awkwardly placed place, uh, basement that was just like kind of shoved in the corner of the dirt shack part of the house. Uh, and the basement was connected to a hallway and in that hallway was a custom bedroom for each of my dogs because I, of course, had a bajillion dogs. I think I was actually only like maybe 10 at the most and even that's a stretch. Uh, and then I built one restaurant and I didn't finish it. And then I never touched that world again. I found a single diamond on that world and it was like the biggest moment of my life. Back then, I didn't think diamonds were something you found like to me like they were just like this mythical rare item and if you found it like that's insanely lucky like how did you find that without cheating that's insane wow like it boggled my mind back then very a very small little sunbeam uh, and then the other earliest world i can remember was actually a creative world uh and my idea was like oh it's gonna be split in half, and one half is the fantasy world of a teenage child girl or something going on magical adventures, and I built like a giant gingerbread house with, ironically, I think there was like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle server, not, not server, sewer underneath it, which was very shitty because like, First of all, you went through the toilet to get there, and it was a very ugly toilet. Second of all, uh, I'd never watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I just wanted to have a cool ninja sewer. Third of all, this was on a super flat world, so I had like, two blocks of space to build my quote unquote sewer. Uh, I built a giant tower with doors that only opened during the day, and a giant garden with gates that only opened at night. I built a bunch of different little uh, holiday-themed areas, including, like, rides. And it was, like, all of the holidays. Like, I had stuff for Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, uh, Christmas. Like, I was included in, like, every holiday I could think of. I probably would have done a President's Day one if I'd thought of it, but I didn't, because I was a baby. Anywho. So. I need to go through with Bruce next. Where? I, yeah, I did all sorts of. I think one of the things that I did on that world that was like actually a little bit impressive was I made a what's it called? I wouldn't call it organic, but I wanted to build a giant plush horse unicorn thing. And it was like really big and I actually like did like a decent chunk of it before I got bored because it was too repetitive and slow for my little baby brain. But like, it looked decent, not good. Well, it, it was okay. It looked good relative to what I had done before that point. Like I built the legs with angles and different shapes and rounded edges. Like, I don't know if I would call it an organic because it was still like pretty, uh, pretty not organic. <laughs> but like, considering my age, I think it was like a decently uh, impressive achievement. Miss Sadie, have you joined us? Hello! Miss Sadie has joined us. For those who don't know, Miss Sadie is my beloved puppy dog. I would kill for you. Yeah. The little weirdo. A little freak. But I love her. You don't want this. 
add it. I don't think I brought any dark oak. That for that little teeny strip in there. Oing. How high do they go? They go all the way up. So in this, they'll go all the way down. Gonna go boop 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 boop. Just go down at four level for now. And we're just gonna temporarily pick it. And then we're gonna go do back corner here. You know, I just had a thought based on our chat about art AI before. This isn't technically an AI so much as it's an artificial entity, but not like a sentient one. At least, not legally sentient, but sentient in my heart. Miku this! I would kill for Hatsune Miku. And if you say she isn't real, then your mom isn't real. Oh! I love you, Miku. She's just a little, a little pretty little lady. And she sings, and she loves to sing, and she loves her fans. Like, Miku is just the most wholesome character in the world. And, like, honestly, I don't think we, like, are grateful for her enough. Thank you, Miku, for existing. Amen. Make sure to say your daily prayer to Miku! Miku-sama! Alright, that's my daily cringe. Anyway, I do love Miku. I, I used to be really into Vocaloid songs, but I didn't know any of the good ones. So I would just, like, Google Vocaloid songs and then click on one and listen to it. And they were usually, like, people's, like, collections of them. Like, oh! Vocaloid songs that make me angry, or Vocaloid songs that make me sad, or Vocaloid songs to kick ass to. Like, like I didn't watch the original ones because I just googled Vocaloid songs, so most of them ended up being compilations. So, I don't know most of the Vocaloid songs that are like really well known. I just know the ones that I happened upon by googling it. But I was really into those songs for a while, like, I would not listen to anything in English. And, like, the suggestion that maybe English songs can be good too would very much upset me. But even if I was a little bit silly about how I was, like, refusing to listen to English songs, I do think that, like, a lot of, uh, modern pop songs you kind of pale to some Vocaloid. Which isn't me being like, oh, children these days. Like, even just like at the time that I was listening to stuff. But like, I don't think that's an issue with like Western music or even like specifically American music as it is an issue with uh, the big music industry. Because I found that like, there are a lot of songs that bring me similar joy and unique ideas as Vocaloid songs done by indie groups. And like, this isn't meant to be a hipster like, oh, if you listen to Taylor Swift, you are a loser. Like, listen to whatever songs make you happy. Personally, I feel like a lot of like, big, widespread, <laughs> mainstream, <laughs> oh god, I sound like a hipster. I feel like a lot of, like, uh, <clears throat> industry popular music is popular because, like, it's designed to fit a certain taste. And while that might work for a lot of people, it's kind of like a lot of people like burgers a lot. Like, McDonald's is very successful. A lot of people love McDonald's. But, like... I'm not really looking for a burger and fries. I'm looking for, I don't know, Thai fusion cuisine or something. <laughs> it, it's less a matter of, I think niche music is better, and more a matter of, I'm kind of 
tired of the format of indie music. I mean, not indie, the format of mainstream music. Again, at the risk of sounding like a turdy little hipster. I'm just kind of like bored of it. I, I, I want new things. And if you still like that kind of thing, that's totally fine. I just, I need new flavors for my ear brain. I need feel things that I don't normally feel. I need experience. So yeah, I think that's a big part of the reason why I like indie bands and things that are like, for example, no, Vocaloid. Things where like, because it's not a big studio that's gonna like be like, okay, we have to crank as much money as possible out of each and every single song we ever make. Like, they feel safer to experiment because like, there's not millions of dollars riding on their success, so they can try things that might not work. And then when they do work, it's fucking amazing. Oh, there's this one song. I'd play it on stream if I wasn't certain I'd get copyright struck. King Beetle on the Coconut Estate. Like, oh, it's, it's so cool. Like, when it goes into like the, the part where he starts like, singing really intensely, like, not quite a beat drop, but like, kind of the same type of vibe where like it gets like super like doo 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 intense. That part is so cool, man. It gives me chills. Oh! And I, like, another thing that I like is like a lot of like more niche musicals because like, and sometimes even non-niche musicals because like, they don't need to be as strict as like, Big game radio music. They're not as like wild and fluid as independent artists are, but like there's still a lot of creative ideas and also theater songs are just fun. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on music and like how it makes me feel. Although I joke about Taylor Swift, I used to be like a huge fan. Again, at risk of sounding like a hipster, before she was as popular as she is now. <laughs> that doesn't make me better in any way, it doesn't make me like the superior fan. And it doesn't- and like her being popular now isn't the reason I lost interest. I just got bored because I, I was following her stuff for a long while and like that doesn't mean she's a bad artist. It just wasn't interesting to me anymore. And like that's probably more of a personal thing than a reflection on the artist Taylor Swift, but like, you know, it's fine. It's, it's okay to like, just get bored of something. Heaven knows I get bored of myself sometimes. <laughs> okay. See if we can't figure this bad boy out. Alright, I think we'll start in... Upside down. You know, just flat walls for now. Upside down stairs. We're gonna need to do more spruce mining because we are running out. Probably a good starting amount. That goes like that. Then we do need to make our oak trap doors. Bam. Bam. One, two, three, four, six. That's twelve either side. We're gonna need twenty-four total of these bad boys. This is not nearly enough. No, not the spruce. Okay, that should that should more than cover it. Like this. Go here. That was not supposed to open up. Bam! Yeah, I should be doing this right. Bam, 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 bam. 
Where did the... There it is. Bam. 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 I'm trying to think of other songs and artists that I really like. One song that kind of makes me angry, not because of the song itself, but for other reasons, is... You know, I wanna ruin our friendship, we should be lovers instead. Cause like, oh, it's a really good Willow Women Love Women song about like, best friends falling in love with each other. And if you watch like the lyric video, uh, it's... It's actually like two girlfriends who are like jokingly uh, going over when they used to just awkwardly try to flirt with each other without giving away their feelings and it's so cute and then TikTok just turned it into like this really awkward trend mostly being done by straight people. I saw this one of a teenage girl who was doing it with her friends, like, 40-year-old dad, and it's like, no! No! It was a cute queer love song! What have you done? <sighs> Goodness gracious. How can I live, laugh, love in these trying times? I don't like to gatekeep anything. Music, fandoms, anything. But like, please, don't bring your weird desire to date an older man in a manner that is very, very unhealthy for somebody your age and put it on top of a song that is sweet, wholesome love. Stop chasing men who are old enough to be your father. Please. <sighs> anyway, my agony aside, it's still a good song. Like it, it's loud. It is a good one. Oh, another good one is um, "The Fly" by Cosmo Sheldrake. They've got some actually really good ones. Uh, the, the Fly I like. It's actually a Song version of a fairly famous poem. So that's neat. If you're into poetry and such. Which I am, because I'm a big old dork. But then, like, uh, there's this other one. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I know that I like uh, Swim Along. I think that was what it's called. Anyway. Cosmo Sheldrake. Really, uh quirky artist. There's one song I don't really like because it sounds a lot just like crashing every symbol in the kitchen together. Who keeps symbols in the kitchen? What am I saying? I don't care for that one because it hurts my ears. But a lot of the songs that Cosmo Sheldrake does, very fun, very cool, very wanky, so to say. Uh, what are some other good artists? Hold on, let me check my... I have a big old playlist that's just called Music. And it's just every song I like that I remember to add to the playlist anyway. Uh, and I just shuffle it. Uh, this isn't really a niche artist, but Dodie. Love her. Her stuff is good. Again, not the most niche ever, but another one that is really good that I don't hear enough people talk about is the Oh Hellos. Uh, if you've ever seen like those animations done in the commune, those uh, like, you know, animation trends that people do, the one that's, uh, there will come a soldier, mighty with his sword, or however it goes, soldier, poet, king. They did that song, and like, they have some other really good ones. I need you so bad to look up The Valley by the Oh Hellos. That song, like, oh, we were born in the valley of the sins of our fathers. Blood was our, our inheritance. No, we did not ask for this. It's so cool! 
Oh, I love the oh hellos. Their music is fun. Speaking of fun music, a good remix. This morning when I woke up, I was very concerned because I thought that Sadie may have died while I was asleep because she was just laying completely still. I poked her, didn't move, and I was thinking, oh god, she died, my beloved puppy dog. Then I poked her again, didn't move. I pulled the blankets off her face. She looks over at me with like the most disdainful expression and snorts in derision. Like, what do you think you're doing? I gently put the blankets back, and she continues just laying there. <laughs> and she just laid there for a couple more hours. And eventually she came out and she was doing just as well as ever. She was perfectly fine. She just wanted to sleep in for a few hours. <laughs> but like, who can blame her? Who doesn't- who doesn't like sleeping in? Weirdos, that too. This is a targeted call-out post at my little brother who wakes up at like 5 a.m. just because. Like, what are you doing? You don't even need to be awake that early for school! What is wrong with you? I love him, but like, something is deeply wrong with him. <laughs> Getting so good, look how deep we're going. We're not even all the way there! Like, this is like, less than half of how deep this will be, and it looks so far from the ceiling. Oh, this is gonna make everything look so cool and deep. Ooh! Loving it. Alright. Finish out this little back corner here. Gotta come over this side. Come on. Yes. Up. I recently learned something about one of my all-time favorite games. It was my favorite game until I played Hollow Knight and Hollow Knight 1 because Hollow Knight's my beloved. But Undertale. So when I was in the true lab for the first time, absolutely terrified. My family all out of town. I was home alone and I had been playing all day long. And by the time I got to the true lab, it was nighttime. So I was in bed with my laptop on my lap, with the blankets pulled up over me. It was just like so chilling, super creepy. It was a really good experience. Uh, so the scene where you're laying in a bed and an amalgam comes out, you can either move to escape or, and I didn't know about this, you can stay there. And what happens is as the amalgam reaches out for you, it gets closer and closer, and then its hand, instead of reaching for you, starts to lower down. And it grabs the blanket, and it tucks you in! It's like this foreshadowing, both of the amalgams not being as frightening and dangerous as they seem, and it's just this cute, sweet little moment of this monstrous being just showing some casual kindness to a child. And like, the amalgams are sentient. They are aware. And they probably recognize that this is a human. Because most, well, not most. I don't know if most, I, I think most. Uh, most of the monsters I would hazard to say recognize Frisk as a human. So even though they know this is a human, that they know the soul can be used to free them, their reaction isn't try and take it like a lot of the monsters in the rest of the underground. Just as a child, I'm going to tuck them in and make sure they're comfortable because they are laying in a bed. They deserve a good night's sleep. It's so cute! Like, ah! Makes me cry so hard. Undertale is such a good game, man. Like, I know it's been memed to death, but like, it's still good. You can't take that away from me. You can't take that game's wholesomeness and cuteness away. 
I know Sans is Tumblr sexy man, but I don't. I don't care he's Tumblr sexy man number one. I don't care that Undertale is very much a silly little fandom. I love it. And honestly, even if something is quote unquote cringe, there's just like this and just unconditional love for something. And that's how I feel about Undertale. Just, it makes me so happy. It, it's such a sweet game. It, it made me tear up. Although Hollow Knight is my favorite game overall, Undertale will always hold a special place in my heart. And it did make me cry. It did it without any cheap tricks like killing somebody, except for when I killed people. That, but that's different. <laughs> I was very, very emotionally invested in Undertale. Like, I, I was not physically able to play through the genocide route. I couldn't even watch a full playthrough of it because it was so emotionally upsetting to me. I have very high empathy, which sounds like a brag, except it isn't because like I get really emotionally stressed out about problems that are not mine. Like, for real, I... <laughs> Because I'm bad at, like, understanding people's emotions and I have high empathy, a lot of the time I will think somebody is upset and then I'll be upset, but they're not actually upset. So I'm just, like, feeling upset for no reason. It's stupid. People who say, like, oh, I'm an empath, it's such a gift, they are either lying about having high empathy or they are lying about enjoying it. <laughs> because it sucks! I don't think I'm an empath, quote unquote, because that like implies some kind of supernatural ability. But like, I do have high empathy. And, like, I don't want to feel sad about a problem that the actual person probably doesn't feel sad about. I'm just thinking that I would feel sad in that situation, so I feel sad for them, even if it actually doesn't bother them. It's stupid. But like, because of that high empathy, Undertale just absolutely wrecked, like, it wrecked me. I could not, like, I, I, I did two playthroughs. The first one, I unfortunately killed Toriel because I didn't realize there was any other way out of the fight. It haunts me. And then the other time, I did another kill in that run. Uh, you know the little guy with the hat made of ice? I realized, oh, you can knock the hat off with an attack, and then it's easier to spare him. And I did that once, and it worked great. Then I did it a second time, and he died instantly. So I, I have two runs. In the first one, I killed two people. And then the second one was my true pacifist run. <laughs> and that's it. I did not play any other runs because I was so emotionally affected by the like, oh, don't reset anymore. Let's just live this happy life. And I was like, oh, yeah. I could never do that to my friends! This isn't saying like, oh, if you played, uh, the genocide route or what have you. No mercy, you're a bad person. It, it's more a matter of how much of a little baby I am. <laughs> like, I know, logically, they're not real. They're just little digital guys. And not sentient digital guys, just, like, pretend digital guys. But I still love them. I still care for them so deeply. I want them to be happy. Why is that so much to ask for? So yeah, could not play through Genocide Route, which is funny because I actually later got like a really big hyperfixation on Kara or Kara, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard it every which way under the sun. But like, I got really fascinated by them and their lore for a while. Never witnessed it firsthand though, because uh, I'm not touching the no mercy route. I'm not hurting my friends. I would never, I love them. Again, very much a dweeb. Very, uh, very dorkish. Okay, so, good, I'm not correct. Run straight across. I'm gonna push this back by one. Oop. Oop. I really 
like the theory that Kara or Chara, Kara, Kara, but however you pronounce it. I like Kara personally, like character, because you know, they're the main character, unless you count Frist, and it's complicated because like, usually you name the main character. You know, lore complication. But like, I like this theory that they're the narrator, and like, the route you choose affects their mindset. So they become more aggressive and start pushing for control in the No Mercy route. But like, if you do a pacifist route, like they're just helping you along. They're your little companion. And it like also makes sense for like a lot of the information that there is in the game. Like I personally, I love that theory. Whether or not it's true, it's true to me. And that's what matters of the day. How do I tell which one? Here I believe. The sun. Oof. Woo! Hello. Careful, I don't want to look you in the eyes! I really trying to get me to fight him. I would rather not stir. Thank you. Very carefully. I don't think I looked him in the eyes. I need to kind of... Where I look. Grab this back. Alright. We've got some good progress done. There's not a lot we can do until I do some more uh, mine. All of these pillars I should be able to at least bring down to ground level. Let's get that done today. You know, like, although Miku obsession has gone down somewhat in the West, not a hundred percent, because they forget Miku. I will kill them <laughs> in a video game. Anyway, uh, the love for Miku in, Amer in the West has uh, gone down somewhat over the years. Not like people disliking her so much as just her just not being quite in the popular zeitgeist as much. But like, she's still pretty big in Japan. When I was studying abroad over there, like, I saw like a total, little, little uh, I saw like a poster for like one of her holographic live concerts just in this busy train station. Just. Same as you would see for any other celebrity, and it was like a really cool moment. Like, oh, it's the Japanese celebrity I know! My Miku! My dear girl! I love her. Honestly, like, Miku's just peak design. And I don't know what about her design is peak, but it just is. Like, I love the neon hair. I love the versions of her with, like, uh, Techno decals. I love all the costumes people put her in. Like, I have yet to see a clashing me outfit, like a, a, an unpleasant to look at one, which is weird because she has bright blue hair, so you think that wouldn't work with much. But I see her in all these different costumes, and I'm like, yes, Miku Slay Queen. Maybe that's the lesbian, in or bisexual, or what have you. The women lover. desire but like she is pretty do not lie who hasn't thought about giving Miku a little kiss on the cheek or more blushy emoji blushy emoji blushy emoji <laughs> oh I'm so annoying anywho uh, I am a little concerned about like, we used cauldrons in some of those, and like, anvils. It shouldn't be obvious just glancing down that they're the wrong way around on the mirror version. 
it should be a subtle enough detail, especially since they're set into recesses in the wall. But it is going to annoy me a little. Alright, I definitely am going to need to do some wood farming off camera. Or maybe we need to just research how to make a wood farm, because, like, it would be nice if I can just, like, sit down and AFK. Oh, excuse me. If I could just sit down AFK and get a shit ton of That would make my life considerably easier. So it's definitely... It's worth looking into, actually. We are now out of spruce. I do think that is where we're gonna call it today. Thank you so much for hanging out. We got so much work done. Look at this pit. Look at this pit. We're starting to get our mirror effect in. Oh, I need a no wrong button. Look how far up that is. And it's gonna be like twice as far when we're done. That's so cool. I almost wish the floor was down here. No, I'm gonna love the mirrored effect. I'm very excited about it. Take a quick look from the top side. How it's going so far. Oh, it's gonna be so cool. Guys, I'm so excited.